the importance of the time domain, we realize that we have the energy entering through space from the time domain. The basic charge, every charge, every dipole, and every dipolarity already accomplishes broken symmetry in both in, in energy flow in three space and in the time domain individually. But there's a four space symmetry that's maintained. In other words, exactly as much energy comes in in compressed form in the time domain to the charge as leaves it in three space in expanded form. So we still maintain the conservation of energy law but we have also discovered the basic, fundamental, giant negentropy operation of nature. Every charge has been doing it since the very creation, if it's been around the original matter, some 14 billion years. That's good enough for me. So if it's going to fail, it's going to fail at some time in the future. This mechanism continues. You do not have to put any energy in. Once the uh, broken symmetry is established, it goes forever. Uh, that's been in physics since uh, 1957. Now, the way you get it to a single charge from the dipole, you realize that in quantum electrodynamics, any isolated observable charge is clustered by virtual charges of opposite sign clustered around it. They have to take into account the shielding of that charge, and they speak of the bare charge plus, uh, plus the uh, observed charge being different numbers because of the shielding. And they calculate that. A standard thing, not Tom Bearden. But if you take one of those virtual charges while it is existing, and you take a differential piece of the so-called isolated observable charge, you have yourself a composite dipole for a moment. That's all right. It's real while it does exist. It's fleeting, but it's real. And there's another one the next moment, another one, and so on. So I can really cheat, treat the charge as a set of dipoles, and anything I work out for a dipole applies to the charge. So all the stuff between uh, the agreement between uh, reinterpreting the Whitaker decomposition of the scalar potential, there's a scalar potential between the ends of every dipole. That agrees with a quantum field theory uh, approach as Mandel and Shaw showed in quantum field theory using photon theory, but all four polarizations of the photon, and also agrees with particle physics that says you get the energy out of the vacuum. The vacuum exists in time even if it's not observable. The virtual state does exist, it's just not observable. So if you call three space observable or observable three space, then the virtual state actually is a structure, internal structure in time. It's okay. If it's energy up there, it's got a structure, it's got rates of flow, it's got density, all that stuff. It's got uh, differences uh, in intensity, which means a potential. It's got a direction, it's a time direction either into the charge or out of the charge. Now, this, however, dramatically opens up things like physics and chemistry, because in chemistry, in the standard model, they assume equilibrium. The, the standard U1 model assumes equilibrium. You do not have these disequilibriums. They have not taken into account this fundamental thing we just talked about, that every charge and every dipole already does. Now, if I look at a set of experiments with this type of eye, for example, suppose you tell me that in one of these that I mix an acid and I mix a hydroxide, and I get the neutralization. The chemistry agrees with this. The tests show that. But I don't get the heat. No exothermic reaction. No exothermic reaction. Okay. The problem then is the standard model in equilibrium says you will always get heat. There's nothing wrong with that standard model as long as that space-time remains flat and as long as you didn't have an interaction with a, the with a vacuum, that is the time domain, with a virtual state. What you have just proved is that that assumption in the standard model no longer applies. You have experimentally proved that you now have violated, gone outside that model to a higher form of phenomenology, and you have involved an interaction with a curved space-time and with a local uh, activity of the vacuum. You have involved the supersystem, not the system. The standard model kills the supersystem. It only has one-third of the, of the components that are actually interacting. Now, for most cases, when equilibrium is recovered by decay very quickly, that's good enough. When it does not decay quickly but is stabilized, that is not good enough and will not even describe the phenomenology. So what you have further told me is that in the acid and the hydroxide, I have some peculiar properties built in here, wired in, in the particular acid and the hydroxide I've made, that causes them to remain stable in a condition where they normally could not be stable in an equilibrium condition. You have stabilized a disequilibrium condition very precisely. And that means you have an, a locked-in interaction with curved space-time and with a local vacuum. You have a super-system uh, situation, not a system situation. You see the approach we're coming from.
It looks to me like the approach we're coming from is that the these conventional models, in a sense, are a subset of a, of a larger model. set. That's correct. So what you're doing is you're talking about graduating to a situation where you're, en you're enlarging. You're either having to create to discover the other subsets. Or you're having to larger. The, you're having to enlarge the members of your existing subset. That's right. And fortunately, the models that will allow you to do this, that will fit what you're doing, they do exist. Now, I'll give you what the models are. There are Sachs Unified Field Theory. That means he takes the vacuum. He t his theory applies from everything from the the quarks and nucleon, uh, quarks inside the nucleon, the gluons, mm -hmm. to the whole universe and everything in between, quantum mechanics and everything, he got it all. And it's engineerable, baby. It's engineerable electromagnetically, but with a different kind of electromagnetics, a higher symmetry electromagnetics. There are several other kinds of electromagnetics that already cover a good part of that. A good one is O3 electrodynamics, which uh, the Alpha Institutes, uh, the Alpha Foundation's Institute for Advanced Study has been uh, developing under the leadership of Dr. Myron Evans. Now we have over a hundred papers right now carried on a DOE website. It's restricted to scientists because we didn't want to argue with the idiots that said you can't ever have a new model. You can't have a higher symmetry electromagnetics and all that sort of thing. But uh, uh, you know we can probably arrange with Dave Hamilton to get you guys access to that since you're not interested in starting a big cur dog fight. You're interested in what the content is. Another place you can look is SU2 group symmetry electromagnetics. Now, a leading exponent of that is Dr. Uh, Barrett. Barrett was one of the founders and uh, movers and shakers behind the ultra-wideband radar. And Barrett handles higher symmetry electromagnetics quite well, very well. So there are models. They were developed over in particle physics for situations where the Maxwell Heaviside theory, the U1 stuff, falls apart, won't work. They were developed specifically to include higher symmetry phenomena not contained in the U1 model. That's why they were developed. But there's been this tremendous resistance to correcting what's taught in our schools, in our universities. Instead, we still teach all the electrical engineers U1, we still teach all the chemists U1, and uh, you know, we meanwhile know we have better electromagnetic systems and more phenomenology available but the scientific community is dominated by the large output of people uh, trained only in U1 electrodynamics. So we've got to argue with the whole scientific community almost. There's only a small number of people working around these peripheral areas. Some particle physicists, a few guys over here, some people pushing the electromagnetics out into higher symmetry uh, situations. It but they do exist. causes you to ask the question, is the... Um resistance to examining these new models is the intellectual entropy um, strictly intellectual or is it because uh, if you discover some of these systems and you actually create an ap applied science for it you can actually create enormous upheaval in existing industry with its enormous investment in equipment and machinery I mean we see that with energy if there was someone who could actually on a large scale produce systems of free energy my god you'd you talk about the loss of hundreds of billions of dollars of investment in, in the of electrical course. infrastructure. So I think it, it, it's a really interesting kind of side sidebar to all of this is the fact that um, the, um, they feed each other, I think. I think the actual entropy to, to really get in and examining these other systems and enlarging our understanding, enlarging the knowledge base, comes from uh, uh, business considerations as much or more as intellectual ones. Oh, of course, and the scientific community right now is very dominant, dominated by, you know, who controls science is who controls their funding. Somebody got to pay the freight. I'm speaking as one that doesn't have a salary because I'm too big of a rebel. <laughs> the, uh, but somebody's got to pay the freight. Okay, how do you get the freight paid? If you're a professor at a university, you have very little freedom anymore, contrary to popular opinion. For one, the state, the uh, university demands that you go out and get outside money because, you know, under the uh, uh, overhead and burden rate, this, the uh, university is going to get at least half of it to help them cover their expenses. So they're very interested in you getting out, uh, outside money. If you want to get your graduate students funded so you can have graduate students working on their doctorate and, all, and, and doing a, a good job, you've got to get outside funding for that and for their projects. Okay, when you start to do that, when you go out to get these packages, these packages come.